Killer whales, of course, are in that, in that category of social animals. And those kinds of animals are easier for us to relate to as humans, too, because they do so many of the same things we do. They have friends. Mothers and cows stay together long beyond the period of absolute dependence. They share food. We share food. We have this population of interesting, charismatic animals off our doorstep, and they're suffering. And we, societally, I think, feel compelled to do something about it. So I've been in this, this game of studying killer whales for about 35 years. I've always said if I can't study killer whales, I'll have to deliver pizza because I don't know how to do anything else. This is what I do. Threatened by a dwindling food supply. The plan to save a starving and endangered orca has hit a major roadblock. Southern resident killer whale numbers are dwindling. The southern residents are an endangered population of killer whales that spend most of their time in southern BC and northern Washington. So they live right in an area of high human population. What makes them different is that the vast majority of their diet is Chinook salmon. The study that I've been working on with, with my colleagues is we're looking at how they get thin and fat um, and how that's in relation to salmon abundance. So are they surviving better when there's more salmon or, or, or not? We're taking pictures from above. We see the shape of, uh, of the whales very clearly that way. And what we've learned in the last few years is that their width, which is an indication of how fat they are generally, can change a lot, even in the course of a few weeks. A lot of salmon around, they get fatter. Not much salmon, they get thinner. It's not rocket science. So a lot of people ask, I mean, if there's not enough salmon, for goodness sake, why don't they just turn around and eat something else? Eating unfamiliar food's risky. Some fish have spines that can injure the whale's intestinal systems or have parasites that can infect them. So the safest thing for a killer whale calf to do is to be conservative and learn its food preferences from its mom, and that's what they do. Well, going forward, we'll continue measuring the condition of the whales and providing that information to fisheries managers. We can say, okay, in this particular month of this particular year, the whales are really thin. Can you shut fisheries down or can you limit fishing during this period? And what's cool is the fisheries managers so far have been really receptive to this. They're interested in it. They want to do ecology-based fisheries management. So if we can say to them, hey, you're not getting many salmon and the whales are really starving, they can shut fisheries down tomorrow. You gotta be motivated to do it. This is the motivation. It's easy to think this is natural and we shouldn't worry about it, but that's wrong-headed, I think. If they do go extinct, you lose the, the culture, you lose the dialects, they're gone for good. 